So I'm so excited that we're back from the field in Italy. I want to show you what we've been doing with the plants um, since we got back. I'm so excited to see them actually in your lab and see what we're doing with them. All right. All right, so our first thing that we did is we need to dry them. This is Hercules, our big plant dryer. <laughs> Somebody painted for you, it looks like. Yes, we're oh. but here we have. So here they are. Here's our plants. Yeah. And the ones that we collected? Yes, they, it looks like they're down here. They've already been um, grounded to a nice powder. Okay. And so you can see in here we have some, um, some, uh, basically room dehumidifiers that, that dry them at a low heat and with some air circulation. And yeah, so after that's happened, we're making extracts out of them over there. Okay. So how do you make the extract? So we make these extracts by taking the plant powder and steeping it in ethanol and water. And so basically this is a maceration extraction and they'll stay like this for 72 hours being agitated every day. Then we filter that off, we decant it, and then add new alcohol and water for another 72 hours. So it takes about a week to make the extract. Okay. And these are in which stage? So right now they have... So it looks like they're in the second maceration stage according to the label. And so they're almost ready for filtration and then we're going to put them on the rotavaps. We're gonna go see what those are. Yeah. So here's here's a good example of one. Ooh, so okay, so what's happening in here? Okay, so we have a heating bath at the bottom, so it's at a, you know 38 degrees Celsius. And if you touch this, give it a little touch, it's nice and cool. Oh, we have wow. a, a circulating chiller, and basically we take that filtered um, extract put it into one of these bottles, but the heat helps to evaporate off the alcohol, and when it gets to this stage, it um, hits that cold coil and drips off. So at the bottom here, we have um, the liquid ethanol that's in water that's coming off, and what will be remaining inside the um, flask is the extract. Okay, for how long does it have to be on this machine? Um, it depends on, on what, we're, what kind of solvents are present, but with ethanol, it's usually under an hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to take you over to show you how we do our freeze drying. All right. kind of fun. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Let's go over here and see. So um, this is our freeze dryer. It's a <laughs> <laughs> lovely as it is. Yes. So in this case, we, we start by um, by freezing our, our flasks. And then basically you have a little bit of ice crystals that form with the extract. And then in this machine, it pulls all the water out. So in the end, you're left with this nice fluffy powder. Um, and actually, I'm going to show you what they're doing over here because they're taking it to the next level. All so let's right. go over here. So, Marco, can you tell us what you're doing? So, <laughs> Marco, <laughs> Marco is. He's scraping this glass, little scrapers. It's a little bit of manual work to get these out, but in the end, I don't know if we have any examples of nice fluffy powder. This is what it looks like in the end. So see how nice that is? This wow. nice powder. Yeah, yeah. And so this is our, our drug. Can you guess how many compounds are in there? A lot. A lot. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It's, it's, there's so many because it's, it's a mixture. An extract is a mixture of, of compounds that are found in the plant. And then this liquid is basically a rinse that we have uh, to get the remaining stuff that's stuck to the side. So let me show you what we do with that rinse over here. So All right. we go back to the other side of the lab. Thank you, Marco, for that You're demonstration. Welcome. So this is our chemical safety hood. And this is one of our drying apparatuses. So you can see that we basically took that liquid and it's just blowing air onto the vials of liquid. And so eventually they evaporate off. Ah, and that's where you get the last little itty bit. You get that, that last stuff. little bit. Exactly. And how long does this take? Uh, it, it can take about a day or so. Yeah, it depends on how much liquid that's is all? in there. Yeah, and it just comes and you just pull it off. And why are some further in and that one? Well, I think they, they lift some of them if 
they're really full, so you don't get any backsplash. Oh. Yeah. And then what do you do with what's left in that bit after everything is dried off? So we include those in our drug library. And um, do you want to see it? Yes, the I drug do. drug library? Can I see your drug library? I'll show you my drugs. <laughs> drug library. So we have a lot of freezers. <laughs> Mother Earth goddess, so <laughs> let's see what's in Gaia. Woo! So this is just a part of the library, and so these are each numbered um, by collections. We also have for our major product projects, we'll have like big jars of extract. Oh wow! And so we make a lot of it okay. because in the end, the active compounds that we find in the plant mm -hmm. may only be like point. 0.01% of the overall extract. So it takes a lot to get down to that 0.01%. So you would need a huge amount of material in yeah. order to get that. But, and um, now with all of the things that we just saw, mm -hmm. which is a lot, and there's a lot of freezers, what happens next? So we have 1,800 extracts. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> so we test them over in the microbiology lab, which we'll visit later. Um, but when we get our results back from the micro lab and we have some promising activity, we go to the next step in the process, which is to separate them through chromatography. Okay. Can I see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about, hey, Monique, you want to come and tell us about the flash? Sure. I just did some. Oh, I'm actually, yeah. Some. Why don't we show the results here of the flash? I just finished combining most of them. Um, but either they're separated into test tubes or into bottles. Um, and they're fractionated. So right now I have partition, fractions of partitions. So basically the idea is to separate the compounds through this chemical equipment. Um, and then we also need to be able to characterize it. So this is where Dr. Lyles comes into play. Ah. Yeah. So. so Dr. Lyles, um, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Uh, is this a prep? So this is a chromatogram. So this is uh, our preparative HPLC system, uh, pump, and this is the larger column that we use to um, separate out compounds from mixtures in slightly larger quantities. Um, not as large as the flash, but um, much larger than an analytical system, such as the one there. And it also has a fraction collector, so we can inject a mixture onto the system and then each of these tubes hopefully will be collecting an individual compound and we can monitor that process using the software so this is the chromatogram at uh, 254 nanometers so we're seeing what do, what do each of these peaks mean though so we're seeing uh, the absorption of a um, single wavelength of light by the compound as it passes over a detector and the more that is it absorbed the higher the peak and the higher the peak that equates to more compound diluting at that time. So he's getting these compounds separated on more of an individual level right? So Correct so and then let's see here. If we switch the view a little bit you can see which tubes everything is going into. So oh. this compound we collected manually, um, but this compound came out in three or four tubes that we can then pour together and dry down. And those three or four tubes are distinct from these four tubes in which this third compound diluted in. So we're able to separate three compounds from a mixture. In this one. And this is all from the same original plant? This is a plant extract that was then partitioned through hexane, ethyl acetate, butanol, and water. This is the water, no sorry, the butanol partition. It was then run on the flash chromatograph and one of the fractions from the flash was then injected on the HPLC. So it's already been through three rounds of processing before it goes to the stage. Gotcha. So we're going from hundreds of compounds down to groups of tens of compounds and now through this process we're getting those individual peaks and are isolating single compounds. So it's it's kind of a deductive process gotcha. to get down to it. Um, and then once we have these, um, what do we do with them? Well, once we have them at this stage, we know, hopefully, we, we pretty much know that they're one compound. However, we don't actually know what the identity of the compound is. So the next step is to figure out what it is. Assuming that it's a compound that has some activity, we're 
to be wanting to explore. Uh -huh. So we'll take this to a uh, mass spec. That'll give us the molecular weight of that um, particular species or that particular moiety. And then we'll also do NMR analysis on it. And we can do one and two dimensional NMR to understand its structure. And if we get a little bit lucky, we might be able to crystallize it, which has happened a couple times for us in this lab, and uh, do X-ray crystallography on it, which is kind of the gold standard of understanding structure. You can get 3D confirmation just in one experiment. How do you crystallize it? You said that some you can, some you can't? Uh, by and large, natural products don't crystallize well. Okay. Um, however, there are some techniques that they seem to be working. Um, right now, we've been dissolving things in methanol and using low temperatures. Um, and they crystallized out slowly over time. There may or may not also be a special dance that we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a ritual came in ritual. somewhere. A ritual. Like, it is both an art and a science. It's an art and a science. Uh, uh, <laughs> we have to describe that in the paper. That's right. Please crystallize. <laughs> uh, more advanced uh, crystallization <laughs> techniques usually to use two solvents that are immiscible where one evaporates at a different rate. Yeah. Um, but those actually didn't work very well for us, so we went to something else. That's cool. what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and so in the other lab, we have all, all the biological assays that we run. So we're looking at things that inhibit um, bacteria that are really dangerous to humans. We look for things that are safe to human cells at the same time. So we do counter screening to ensure that whatever we're developing is not going to be harmful um, to humans as well as bacteria. So Always a bummer. Very specific. And then in the herbarium, which we're going to visit later, that's where we keep all of these kinds of specimens. Actually, we have some right here. Um, these are herbarium voucher specimens. So when we were in the field, we were collecting these. And <laughs> and when they come back to the herbarium, they get pressed onto nice paper. We have it in plastic right now just as a teaching demo. Mm -hmm. We don't usually store them in plastic. Um, but this has the all the label information that we record in our notebooks and, and the plant specimen itself. So this is the phytochemistry lab. Plants, crystals, science. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's also one of those things where you hear about people making natural, making products from plants and you don't, the, the process is somewhat of a mystery. So this yeah. is showing what it is step by step and all the expertise of everyone to make it happen. Yeah. Wow, it's real. It's real. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>